We're going to be pre-tripping this bus. This is a Bluebird bus. We're going to be doing the front of the bus in this section. So as I'm approaching my bus, I'm looking under my bus. I'm making sure that nothing is leaning one way or the other, which could indicate a low tire or a broken leaf spring. I'm also looking under the bus. I want to make sure that we don't have anything leaking, hanging, or any foreign objects underneath the bus. We're now going to go to the top of the bus. We're looking at our three clearance lights. They indicate the height of our bus. They're the proper color and they're not broken. Underneath that, we have our school bus signage. It is clearly marked as school bus, indicating to people what we are driving. All of the letters are intact and nothing is peeling. We're then going to go to our eight ways. There are our ambers in the center and our reds on the outside. Our ambers indicate when we are getting ready to load or unload children. The reds tell the public that we have stopped to unload or load kids. They are clean, clear, not broken. They are the proper color. We're now going to go down to our windshield. We're looking at our windshield. We're making sure that it's clean. It's not pitted. There are no cracks. We're looking at our windshield wipers. Our blades need to be soft and supple. When we get in the bus, we will check and make sure they function. We're going to be checking our mirrors. Our mirrors are securely attached. Uh, they are clean, clear, and not broken and properly adjusted for me. We're going to come down to our hazard lights. These are our four ways, which is our hazards and our left and right blinkers. They are clean, clear, and they are the proper color of amber here. We're looking at our headlights. We're going to make sure that there's no water in here, that the lenses are clean and clear, not broken. We will check for high and low beam when we get in the bus. We're also going to be checking our bumper securely attached, as well as our license plate. When we check our fluids, we're going to have five fluids, but usually um, one fluid is up here, which is going to be our windshield wiper fluid. You may have to check to see which side it's on. It can be on either side or in the middle. On this bus, it is located in this corner. Our tank is not cracked. It is at least half full. If this is not functioning, it puts us out of service. So that is the front of your bus. Pre -trip. We are now going to pre-trip the driver's side of the bus. So we're going to start on this front corner. We do have our amber reflector. They are amber in front of the duels and red behind. They must be securely attached, not cracked, not peeling. We know when we get right here that we're going to have our steering system. So we're going to come down and we're going to look underneath we're going to be looking at our steering box that has hoses and lines. It is securely attached. It's not leaking. We're also looking at the linkage. Everything looks to be intact, not missing any bolts or cotter pins there. We're then going to come to our fuse box. And on our fuse box, we're going to be opening our fuse box. We're going to be looking inside at our fuses. We're making sure that we're not seeing any burn marks on the fuses or the wires. Everything appears to be securely attached and I have my spare fuses inside the bus. We're looking at our stop sign. Um, we're gonna make sure that our stop sign, everything appears to be totally intact. When we start the bus and check, we're gonna make sure that the stop sign comes out all the way. We have at least 50% of lights working on this stop sign. We're looking at our reflective tape, making sure it's securely attached, it's not peeling. We're looking at our windows. As we're looking at our windows, we're making sure that they're clean, clear, not broken. We're looking at our emergency exit. It is clearly marked, no letters are missing. We're now gonna be doing our front tire area. Our front tire has three letters, D-I-C. We're gonna be looking at the depth. The depth of this tire can be no less than 430 seconds. I, I is our inflation. We're gonna be looking at our valve stem and our valve stem cover, they're all straight securely attached. We have checked this with the tire gauge, so we're properly inflated. The condition of our tire, we have no bulges, we have no cracks, no chunks missing out of this. It is securely seated on our rim. We're looking at our rim. There are no illegal welds and there are no cracks or dents in our rim. We're going to be looking at our lug nuts, making sure they are all securely attached. There is no rust trails indicating we might have a loose lug nut. We're looking at our hub oil seal. Um, 
We're making sure there's no leakage around this and it's securely seated. Then we're going to go in and we're going to go into our brake drum and our brake uh, linings and pads. Our brake drum is intact. There are no cracks in it. And then our linings and pads are not worn too thin. There's not excessive dirt or grease on those. We're going to go back in again and we're going to be looking at our leaf springs and our leaf spring hangers. Our leaf springs must be uh, secured together. None of them shifted, cracked or broken. We have hangers. The hangers are secure. We have a U-bolt in the middle that is secure. No bolts missing. Off of that, we have a shock absorber. It is straight and the hoses attached to that are not leaking. Then we're gonna go back in and we're gonna look for our brake chamber, which has hoses and lines. And it also has a slack adjuster. It might be at the proper angle. Our brake chamber is not dented or broken. It is securely attached and our lines are not leaking off of any of that. So as, oh, and we also have a mud flap. We're making sure our mud flap is secure and that um, it's the height that needs to be. No pieces are missing out of this. On the tire area, the purpose of the tire area checking all of that is to make sure that if we were to have a blowout, if it was too low, underinflated, overflated, uh, we would lose if we weren't having our air to our brake chambers, um, we wouldn't have the braking power that we need. So it's very important that you check all of this. We are clearly marked for the school district that we are. It is not peeling. We're going to make sure that this door opens and closes freely. And when we get inside, we're going to do it again to make sure the alarm sounds. Again, we have our reflectives, reflectors and reflective tape. On the back tires, we've got duals. <clears throat> We're going to be checking our bud spacing in between the duals. And again, DIC for our tires. Depth is 230 seconds, no less than. Inflation, we have two valve stems, two valve stem covers. The valve stems are straight and the covers are intact. I have properly, I've checked it with the tire gauge. It is properly inflated. The condition again, we've got no bulges, no cracks, no tears in this tire. It is securely seated to our rim. Our rim has no cracks, no illegal welds, appears to be in good condition. We're looking at our lug nuts. Again, no rust trails, and those are all secure. We're looking at our hub. And on our hub, all our bolts are securely attached. There's no leakage, it's properly seated. Again, we're gonna go back in. We're gonna be looking at our brake drums and our linings and pads. They are not too thin. Our brake drum is in good condition. There's not excessive grease or dirt on that. Then we're gonna go back in and we're gonna go back into our leaf springs with our leaf spring hangers and our U-bolts. And then we're gonna have our shock absorber with our hoses. Um, there, none of the leaf springs are shifted or moved. They're all securely attached. No bolts are missing. And then our shock absorber is straight and there's no leakage off of that. Back here, we've got the brake chamber, which is a dual chamber. We're looking at that dual chamber. It's not dented crack, it's securely mounted. Um, and the hose and lines of it, off, the hoses and lines off of it are not leaking. We also have our slack adjuster and push rod back there. And they're at the proper um, radius that they're supposed to be at. As we work, come back to right here, we're gonna be looking down. We can see our, our drive shaft down there. And we've got a hanger on that drive shaft we're making sure that that drive shaft hanger is intact. The drive shaft looks straight. If the hanger was not there and we were to drop our drive line, um, it could come back up through the floorboard. So it's really important that you have that there. Also, we're gonna be checking uh, this stop sign right here and our red reflectors, because remember they're red behind the dual. So that's the driver's side of the bus. Now we're gonna be inspecting the back of our bus. So again, we're gonna look at our bus. We'll make sure it's not leaning to the left or the right, indicating a low tire or a broken leaf spring. We're looking for leaks, puddles, anything hanging on, under our bus. And we're looking for any foreign objects under there. So then we're gonna get coming into the top. We've got our clearance lights, which are red on the rear. There's three of them. They're clean, clear, um, not broken. They're the proper color and they indicate the height of our bus. We're looking at our school bus signage. It's clearly intact. There are no letters missing and it is not peeling. We're going to be looking at our eight ways, which is our ambers and our reds for loading and unloading. They are clean, clear, not broken. 
the proper color. We are clearly a marked emergency exit for this back window. There are no letters peeling or check and make sure that this back emergency window opens and closes freely. As we come down from our emergency exit, we're going to be looking at our four ways. They are amber in color. They are clean, clear, not broken. These indicate if we're, which direction we're going or if we may be having a problem. These are our brake lights and our running lights. They also have intentions telling people what we're going to do or if it's dark, they, you can see our vehicle. We have our red reflective tape right here. It's securely attached, it's not peeling. This is our reverse lights. We'll have somebody get in the bus and help us check these back lights once we're going. They are also clean, clear, not broken in proper color. We've got our license plate, which is securely attached, and we've got our license plate light, which much must work or we are out of service. Now we're gonna be going into the engine of the bus. into the engine of the bus, we're going to be doing five, four, three, two, one. So five is our fluids. We've already checked our windshield wiper up front. We're now going to check our transmission fluid. We're going to pull the dipstick, put it back in, wipe it, and reinsert it and bring it out. We're making sure that we have adequate fluid for our transmission. We will check it later after our bus is warm um, and it's at a better, uh, we're going to check it afterwards make sure we have adequate fluid for a warm engine. This is our oil. We're going to take the oil dipstick, we're going to pull it out, wipe it off, and reinsert it, and we're going to check that we're at the proper operating level so we don't burn up our engine. So then we've got, this is our antifreeze, our coolant. On this kind of tank, you can put a flashlight underneath it to make sure that you are in the adequate level. Um, for your antifreeze. This is our power steering fluid. Again, if you look in here, you can see that we're in an adequate level. If you cannot see it in here, you can pull this dipstick, take it out, wipe it, reinsert it, make sure that we have an adequate fluid for a safe run. After that, we're going to be doing four. So we have four components. We've got an alternator. So the alternator has copper wiring. None of that is exposed. It is securely mounted. It is belt driven. We're checking our belts for no more than half to three quarters of an inch of play. There are no shiny spots, no worn parts in this belt. Next, we're gonna come down to our water pump. So our water pump is securely mounted and it, there's no leakage around this. It is also belt driven and we're checking the belts. We have a serpentine belt on this that works all of it. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go our power steering pump. If you follow the lines from your power steering into the back of the block, that's where your power steering pump is. It is internal, it is gear driven. I don't see any leaks or anything bad back there. Then you're gonna come up here to the front and we've got our air compressor. Our air compressor is internal, it is gear driven, and I don't hear any leaks from that at all. So then we're gonna to go to three. Three is our hoses, our clamps, and our wires. So our hoses are soft. There are no brittle parts. I don't see any places where it's broken or leaking. I'm looking at my clamps to make sure they're securely attached on all of my clamps. I'm looking at my wires. My wires are all encased. They're secure. I don't see any burned, frayed, or hanging wires. I'm now gonna go down to two, which is going to be our bumper and our frame. I do not see any illegal welds on this bumper or cracks. Everything appears to be securely attached, as is our bumper. Then we're gonna to go to one. One is going to be on the side, and one is going to be our exhaust. Sometimes you can see it from the back. We'll come over here to get a better view. On this exhaust system, we do not want any soft spots. If you push it and it pushes in, you need to make sure you get that fixed. It is securely attached. If we were to have a leak here, um, it could make the people in the bus, either the driver or the students, sick. So that is the rear of your bus. I'm now going to tell you what's different on the passenger side of the bus. So on the passenger side of the bus, this is our battery box. We're going to make sure our tray is secure. We're going to make sure that our batteries are not leaking and that there's not excessive corrosion up here. The wires are all securely attached. Also, we should always check our deck. 
make sure that our cap is secure, no leakage underneath. We have our cargo bin. We're going to open and close our cargo bins. We're going to make sure they function properly and there's nothing inside of them. Then we're going to come up to our fuel door. Our cap is secure. We're going to look underneath and make sure that our tank is securely attached and there's no leakage from that tank. So those are the only things different on this side of the bus. So we've now come to the door area. We have a loading light and a reflector on this side. We're going to make sure that this loading light um, works. We also have one inside the door once the bus starts. We're checking our doors. Our windows must be clean and clear. No obstructions in these windows. The seals are soft and supple. They're going to open and close freely. We're going to go to our steps. We're going to be making sure that our steps are secure and our other interior loading line is intact and it's going to work. We're now going to sit down in our seat. We're going to make sure that the seat is securely adjusted for us. About a 45 degree angle. Functions, it's secure to the floor. We're going to put our seat belt on, making sure that it comes out, it clicks, and that it is secure. There are no frays or rips in here. I'm looking at my steering wheel to make sure I don't have excessive play. I have that, uh, the city horn and an air horn that both function. I'm now going to turn the key on, one click. I'm now going to turn the key on one click and I'm preparing for a safe start. I have watched my gauges rise and fall. My ABS light has come on and gone off. I'm going to put my foot on the brake and it's now safe to start my bus. So I'm going to make sure that all my gauges calibrate and my air is up to about 120. My air is up to about 120. Four. While I'm making sure that that builds and it's built up to 120, I'm going to be checking all my interior lights, the lights above the driver, they work. I have a noise suppression switch I will check later. I'm going to make sure that my fans go on high and on low. I'm going to turn my headlights on, make sure that I can see high and low beams through my mirrors, which I did. I'm going to turn on my left blinker. It's indicating on my dash that it's blinking. I can also see it in my mirror, as well as my right blinker. It indicates on the dash it's working outside. I'm going to turn my hazards on. My hazards, it shows that it's functioning on the dash, and I can also see them functioning outside on the mirrors. I'm going to cancel that. So I'm looking at my temperature. My gauge is rising to a proper operating level. My air has built up to 120. I have at least a half a tank of fuel. I'm looking at my amps and my volts, and I should be between 12 and 14 on my amps and volts. I'm sitting at 14 right now. I know that my RPM gauge, if I give it a little bit of gas, it goes up. I also can see that my oil gauge is functioning and that it's calibrating, um, and then it's going to be at a proper operating level when I leave with this bus. I'm also going to make sure I can go in reverse, neutral, and drive, and back to neutral. I'm checking all my heaters. I'm going to make sure all my heaters turn on to high and low and are functioning. I'm going to ask my helper to shut the door. Thank you. And then we're going to shut our door, making sure that it opens and closes freely, which it does. We're going to turn on our master switch. When we turn on our master switch, we're going to be turning on our ambers. It indicates inside that our ambers are working. I cannot see them outside in my mirrors, but I'm going to ask my instructor or my um, tester to see if they'll go out and help me with that. When I open the door, I can see that it indicates red. My stop signs have both come out. They're fully extended. The lights are working at least 50%. I'm going to shut that off. We're now going to be checking my defrosters. We're going to make sure all my defrosters work on high and low. This is my CB radio. Um, I've checked it today. I know that it works. I'm now going to shut off my bus, turning my headlights off. I'm going to release the parking brake, turn it back on, and I'm now going to test after it calibrates and sets. 
too. So my gauges have now set. So I've got my foot on the brake and I'm gonna make sure that I do not lose more than three PSI in a minute. Okay, it's been one minute, I've timed it. I have not lost that. I'm now going to pump down my brakes and about 60, an alarm should set off. So we're getting close to 60 now, there goes our alarms. And then down between 20 and 40, the emergency brake is going to pop off. And we're getting close, we're sitting at 30. And there we go, it has popped off. We're now going to turn our bus off. Let the gauges calibrate. ABS lights gone on and off. It's now safe to start our bus. And we're going to start our bus. So while our bus is building back up to air pressure, I'm going to go back down. I'm checking my flooring. And now I'm going to be looking for my emergency equipment. So inside of here, I've got a first aid kit. My first aid kit is securely mounted. The contents are sealed. And my body fluid cleanup is securely mounted. The contents are sealed. I have my fire extinguisher, which is securely attached. It's fully rated and dated. I'm looking at my student mirror. I'm going to make sure that this is properly adjusted for me so I can see from the front seat all the way back to the back. Then also I'm going to be looking for my three red triangles, which are down here. They are securely attached, and I know that I have three working triangles in that box. As I go down, I'm gonna be checking the backs of my seats, making sure that they're all secure. And then I'm gonna tell you about my emergency exits. I've got two roof hatches. I've got four windows, two on either side. I've got an emergency exit door here and the emergency window in the back. I'm going to open at least one of them for you while I'm testing to make sure that it, the sound buzzes off and it securely closes and everything goes off. Um, if you were to doing a real pre-trip to check your bus every day, you do need to check all of these. On the way back, I'm going to be checking my seat bottoms. I'm going to be making sure all my seat bottoms are securely attached to the floor. The runners are all good. There's no parts that are sticking up that may trip a child. Now we're gonna be coming back up to the front of our bus. We're gonna be sitting back down in our seat. Once our air has built all the way back up to 120, so you can either use your high idle or you can use your foot pedal. We're gonna make sure our seat belt is again on. Always have your seat belt on. We're going to be putting it into drive. I'm gonna rev it up to about 1200 RPMs. And I'm gonna be making sure that this brake holds. So parking brake does hold. Then we're going to release our parking brake. Again, it's in drive. We're gonna pull forward about five miles an hour. And we're gonna make sure that when we drive and when we stop, that our steering wheel does not pull to the left or the right and all the braking is smooth. So that is the interior of your bus. So we're looking at the leaf springs. Our leaf springs are not shifted. They are not cracked. They're all secure. This is our leaf spring hanger. And in the middle, we have a U-bolt that holds all of that down. You can see the U-bolts right there. We're looking at our shock absorber, which is right here. It is straight and it is not leaking in any way. This is our brake chambers back here. We're looking at our brake chambers, our hoses and our lines. They're all securely attached. There is no dents or brakes in this. We're looking at our slack adjuster. As you can see it right here, and it's securely mounted in the proper angle that it's supposed to be. I mean, I can, 